Hi, let's now talk about the first part of your thesis, the title and abstract. So the title and abstract are those parts of your thesis that are by far most likely to be read by your reviewers, by the general public, by your colleagues. So that's what you must pay most attention to. What did I tell you about how to write it? Remember, you write the title and abstract before everything else. And once you are then done with writing the introduction, results and discussion sections, then you come back and you write it again. That's very important to remember and uh, to do to get the optimum result for your title and abstract. The first time you write it, you do that for yourself as a guideline of what you want to tell the reader in the subsequent sections. And the second time you do it, you write it for the general public. Then it's time to check whether the abstract really reflects the most important sections and the most important messages that you are trying to communicate in your thesis. So what must be kept in mind for the title? The title is the answer to the question, what have you been working on? Quick, in one sentence, or even in a fragment of a sentence. Tell me. That's the title. Well, there are slightly different ways of writing the title, depending on whether you write a thesis or whether you write a scientific publication that should go to a journal. If it's about a thesis, the title must be short. Why is that? Well, it's because you will need that title when writing up your curriculum vitae, when writing your CV and submit it while you're applying for jobs. So don't make it too long for that. And for the same reason, it's advisable to use some, what I would like to call, general keywords. Keywords that make it clear what kind of subject that you have been working on. Was this about developmental biology? Was this about cancer research? Was this about, well, what was the general environment and uh, the general topic of your thesis? It would be good if your title can reflect that, because then any future employer will immediately see from the title of your thesis as it's displayed in your CV uh, what your background is, what you got experience with. So that's why it should contain some kind of keywords that make it clear what the general topic has been. That's slightly different when you're planning to submit an article to a journal. I mean, journal articles in general are composed the same way as the thesis, as we have outlined that in the previous videos. So there's not too much difference between the master thesis or PhD thesis and a journal article. However, the title in general is phrased in a different way, because for publication in a journal you need to be more specific. You must make it clear to a reader in one sentence what exactly your key findings have been. It must be a one-sentence summary of your findings and from that title the reader must be able immediately whether this is of interest for him or her or not. So the reader will now decide shall I move on, shall I read the abstract or shall I even read the entire article or shall I drop it because it's not relevant for what I'm doing. So for that reason the titles in journal articles tend to be somewhat longer than the titles of master theses or PhD theses uh, and they tend to be more specific so that uh, the reader can get an immediate idea of what the key finding has been. What about the abstract? Well, the abstract should summarize all the key parts of your thesis on one page, or even on half a page. So what should go into your abstract? Essentially, it's the same as what should go into your entire thesis. So, the abstract should first describe the background, like in your introduction. So, it should provide the answer to the question, why did you do that study? What was the background? What was the knowledge before you even started working on it? It's just that in this case, you need to do that in two sentences. 
you wouldn't have several pages like in your introduction. Similarly, you should describe the experiments that have been performed. But again, you wouldn't have as much space as in your materials and methods section. You need to provide a brief answer to the question, what did you do? Similarly, for the results, which are still the most important part in your abstract, but it must be a very brief result section here again, and it should provide the answer to the question, what did you see after having done your experiments? And then again, importantly, the conclusions. You won't have the space that you have in your discussion section, but you should still provide a short answer to the question, why should we care? Why are these results of any importance? And why is it even worth reading your thesis? That's the kind of questions that need to be answered all together on one page. And that's what the abstract is all about. Having written the preliminary abstract, you're now ready to move on. And as stated earlier, I would suggest that you now move on assembling the results section and first of all, the figures that should be displayed in the results. And that will be covered in the next video. Thank you.